Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to keep this quick, so, <laughs> which is what I always say and I never do, but um, I have had a lot of you have been reaching out to me. A lot of us are reaching out to each other. Um, hi, Alex. <laughs> a lot of us are reaching out to each other because we're afraid. You know, I'm afraid. We're all afraid. And we are, um, you know, we're going through some frightening stuff. There's a lot of misinformation out there as well as viable information. Um, so I just wanted to give you all a couple of reminders. Hi, Katie. By the way, I was just looking at your, your puppy picture before I logged on here. It's so cute. <laughs> Um, but I just want to give you guys a reminder because like we're here like if I, I posted a picture today of me going shopping I'm wearing a face mask I'm wearing a hat that has a plastic shield on it I'm wearing gloves and that's what I look like when I go to the grocery store I, and I carry my uh, a small cooler on a strap on one shoulder and a, a canvas bag on the other shoulder because I don't even want to touch the grocery carts. And I put, I made, I make the person sanitize the belt before I put my stuff on it and they run it through. I pick it up, put it back in the bags, pay them. When I get home, sanitize everything. And then the canvas bag and my clothing goes in the wash. I take a shower. Like it's insane. I'm not a panic person, but for me to feel comfortable bringing groceries into my home and keep in mind we have multiple generations with different health levels living in our home i'm not going to you know i don't want to like murder my family because i bring home something other than groceries um so i go to extreme steps but even when I posted a picture, which I thought was like a, ha ha, look, I'm going to the grocery store all, a bunch of people laughed at my picture. My sister Elaine teased me, called me grocery Vader, which I love. But a lot of people responded in like fear and panic. Oh, uh, someone said, hey, after, with those gloves on, I hope you didn't fish in your purse to get out your payment. So of course, that would be taking all the germs, potential germs, putting them in my purse. And I said, no, I actually had the credit card um, kept inside the glove in the back. Uh, so I took it off, but I did have to take, take off my glove to touch the pin pad because if I had germs, I didn't want to put them. You know, it, it's a tough choice. But then when I got to my car, I put all my gear in a thing to be like sanitized later. I sanitized my hands like, wow. Like, even when I do a joke picture of me with the face mask and the hood and the this and that, people are panicked and worried. And I know that everything is about love. We want to reach out to each other in love and compassion, but none of us know the right thing to do. So I'm going to tell you this. Um, I get a lot of information from my guides and for like my entire career in science and healthcare, all, as, along with all of this other stuff, I cannot tell you how often my guides have steered me correct and helped me to create programs that set global precedence and new industry standard in healthcare food science. So even when we're dealing with hard science and virus and global pandemic, tap in with your guides, work with them. Um, and I'll tell you this Wednesday evening online, and I'll post a link to it here. Uh, Uma and I are doing, there's only a few spaces left. It's like $22 and we're doing a message circle and we're each giving messages. Everyone who attends will get uh, their own message. Um, and uh, the two of us will channel and give messages. So that is a paid thing. It's like, I think $22, um, because, and then, and again, there's only a few spots left open. Oh, there's Donovan. And then, uh, this Saturday, 
I'm teaching 11 a.m. Eastern time of free learning to do scrying and get messages from your guides class. And I'm doing three of them this Saturday, the next two Saturdays. That's free, and that'll be here on Facebook Live. Um, the Akashic Record librarians want me to teach as many people as possible how to see the future, how to talk with your guides. And so uh, since, you know, that's a mandate and we want to get it out, all of that stuff is, is free. Um, so just want to mention that. <laughs> Please join me here 11 a.m. Saturday Eastern Standard Time on my Facebook page. I'll be live streaming um, with a crystal ball. And if you bring a, a glass of water, then you can practice at home. Or if you have a crystal ball or a clear quartz crystal, all of that works. So I promised this would be quick and then I rambled. I'm sorry. Here's what I want to tell you. Uh, a few of you reached out to me after my last live stream going, wait, what? I planned my life? I spend a lot of time in the Akashic Library, not just when I'm in this life. My eternal self is there a lot. Um, so those of you who know my story know that I don't have a soul family. I was like an orphan soul. I was a runaway spark and the Akashic Librarians raised me. So um, I owe everything to them. And I never knew why in this life I was born with total memory of all my existence, both in life, between lives, before I started incarnating as human. Now that this stuff is happening and the visions they're giving me, I understand. And it makes sense. It, it was necessary. So having said that, here's how I see each and every person when we're not in flesh, we're with our soul, right? And our soul does not have 3D. Our soul resonates on a different frequency that can connect to 3D. So when each of us is in life, when you're in life and you're in life and you're in life, you are an aspect of your soul that is living in 3D, having an experience. Your soul is always connected with you. You can always connect with your soul. Your soul is happy to guide you, offer advice, be your friend, your mentor, your big brother or sister or whatever. Not only that, every life you've ever lived, <laughs> he's walking into my head. <laughs> every life you have ever lived continues for eternity. So your soul is a collective of your soul's energy, your original soul, and every life you've lived, plus you, and the energy of all the lives that are waiting to happen. You are together as one being, and you are each your own individuals that can be hanging out together, or some past life may decide to go off somewhere and study at soul school for something, for personal skill development um, or a past life. You know, like when we're in life, there are always several past lives with us at any given moment. So, you know, you guys come to me for past life readings and I look, when I look at people, I see not just the 3D person, but the past lives that are with them. That's how I see pretty much everyone as I go around in life. Um, and I am happy for anyone who wants to see people that way. I'm happy to teach it. You know, I'm, it's, uh, I'm happy to teach it. <laughs> oh, Chloe, how lovely. Your two-year-old son is entranced. I'm entranced by that. You know, what a very extraordinary child you have there. I'm sure. How lovely. Um, so when you decide to come to life, the first thing that happens, providing you're in life for your purpose, not because someone asked you to come as their spouse, their you know, significant other, their sibling, their parent, whatever. 
you're coming for yourself you're looking at where your soul is at and where all the lives are and what lesson you need to learn to help always increase you know the structural integrity the frequency the knowledge base of your soul and the collective of all the lives so um you you decide a certain challenge you want to work on like compassion anger usually they're emotional challenges or they're action challenges or you're picking a specific chakra to work with um so you come in you plan okay this is what i need to work on and you sit there with your mentor who like helps you plan your lives and they show you a variety of life possibilities that will help you work with this so you decide where uh who you want to be born to it could be you have no choice of the parents because they're going to be in this situation so if you want to go in this situation you have to be with them or it could be you'll go and you say to someone will you be my mother you know there are all different ways of setting it up and then you um plan out your life challenges you look at what's coming up for this life and how you can use it for your advantage for your growth you uh find oh you're going to be in rio de janeiro in 1982 i'm going to be there also let's make sure we meet up and work on this challenge together do this project together like you plan everything out and then you come to life and by the time you're three six years old eight years old nine years old depending on the person you are no longer in constant connection you are no longer seeing angels or anything like it's all gone your soul has done its best to give you what you need in the early years to make sure you got it because you forget it what's the point of going through challenges if you know they're coming up you'll be like oh yeah this is where i work on blankety blank okay i'll just nip through like they have to be real challenges so then nothing ever goes as planned first of all people that you agreed to meet don't show up or people who are supposed to be supportive of you end up having issues of their own and they're not supportive they're horrible or uh someone who's supposed to be very well balanced ends up having a biochemical imbalance that gives them schizophrenia so they're not going to be your wise best friend like nothing goes as planned just know that people who are totally off the rails on their life they're not living the life they're supposed to plan go across your path mess you up you run into someone you knew in a past life you feel strong recognition you think oh it's my soulmate but why am i so miserable all the time and you wallow in this bad relationship until finally you get out and that person was not your soulmate you just felt a strong bond because maybe in a past life you had a close relationship like nothing goes as planned but your goal is to magnetically find your way back to your life challenges to your plan sometimes though i've seen people's life go so far off the plan that they end up just having a whole new experience and the life they plan they end up doing that the next life sometimes people have a challenge that's more than a one life challenge it might take them a few lives they might even have to live other lives in between it's complicated it's like planning your school you know your education it's like planning your career it's like planning your social life well it is it's complicated here's the thing and i want you to take this away nothing goes as planned so don't blame yourself for anything all right learn from things grow from them find your way back to love even if you did something that really upset someone else or hurt someone else even if you did things that were bad learn from them grow from them the goal is to get to the point where you are no longer reactive to a situation to get to the point where you are emotionally neutral and then you can fill yourself completely with love and then go on to your next challenge so long as you are reactive to a challenge you are not done with it if there's 
an emotional response in your body or a memory or a belief that's keeping you dragged down, you will not be done with it in this life or the next life until you are finally released from it. I mean, think about every challenge you've had in your life. So long as you are reactive to it, you're not free of it and you find yourself back in it again and again. And you're like, oh, I thought I learned this lesson. Again, so long as you're reactive, you will find yourself back in it because you are not done with it. You will be magnetically attracted to it. But the good news is, if you're like, you know what, I don't need to feel guilt, anxiety, you know, any of the negative stuff that would that drag us down. When you're able to release that, you're done. And then you can go on to your next stage of life. It's pretty awesome. I know people who went through all of their life challenges much earlier in life than expected. And then uh, some of them, even their guides will say, well, do you want to die early? Or what do you want to do with your life? And they're like, no, I want to keep living. That's awesome stuff happening. And then they end up having like really cool lives after that. So, you know, and I know other people. I was working with this woman and a past life of hers who died of throat cancer. Oh my God, I thought I was going to die with the choking from this came through actually possessed my body and spoke to her directly saying you need to mend your ways you need to cease your secret habits or you will die a horrible death and then you will have to come back in your next life and repeat this challenge and it will be so much harder for you because you will be in the groove in the rut in the habit of making choices that cause you self-harm and this life said it began with me and it was like a pirate from a few hundred years ago. And he's like, please be the one to end this curse. And I didn't know what the pirate was talking about. Uh, and then my client said, oh yeah, I smoke, but I, you know, I do it like in ways no one knows. And I said, well, it sounds like you're going to, you know, die of throat cancer if you don't stop. And um, so she thought about it and she had like, she didn't exercise. She ate only junk food diet. Uh, she, she was also a secret alcoholic, a secret smoker. Um, I don't, a lot of secrets in her life. And she thought about it and she said, nah, I'll deal with it next life. I was like, okay. <laughs> she said, I'm okay for now. Uh, her takeaway was she was going to stop being secret about her vices and she was just going to be like wide open with it. Okay. I'm a chain smoking alcoholic who eats junk food and I'm going to die. No worry. I'll come back in the next life and deal with it. That was her choice. But you understand, there's no judgment on this. There's no judgment on how we choose to live our lives. It's all gaining experience for our soul and our soul collective, meaning every one of your past lives and your future lives that are one with your soul, be they human lives or lives of other races or species so it is okay for you to forgive yourself and release everything and to love yourself because when you die that's what's going to happen you're going to connect with your soul and it's just total love it's all right to get a jump start on it having said that i want you to understand things happen actions happen our reaction is always our choice. If you want to feel love, you and in, you know instead of feeling fear and anxiety, it takes effort to retrain yourself. Just like my one client did not want to go to the effort of retraining herself. You have to retrain yourself. That takes effort. But if you would think about, would you rather be a person of, anxiety, fear, anger, frustration, joy, love, whatever choice you come up with, that's your choice. And it's fine. That's perfect. If you say in this life, at this moment, I'm in fear and I think I want to be in fear. It could be your soul wants to explore fear and you plan this life to deal with fear. Feel welcome to explore aspects of fear then. I don't know. 
But at the end, you'll want to find your way back to love because that's when, when you are like completely filled with love on every challenge that you went through. Not necessarily love for, you know, if someone took advantage of you. You don't have to love them. Filled with love for self and anyone that you love. But when you realize you don't feel anxiety or fear or in the grip of whatever it was that was taking advantage of you, then you know you're done with it. So, <sighs> planning lives, living lives, and then returning after life, <sighs> it's not complicated when you deal with it all the time, but trying to explain it all at once. I'm sorry. I know this sounds like a lot of information in a short time. But what I'm saying is right now we are going through some frightening stuff. It is all right to feel scared, confused, disoriented. I mean, I have a lot of knowledge on healthcare and this, you know, uh, you know, bacterial outbreaks and stuff like that from my years of being a chef in healthcare facilities, and I'm confused. You know, people keep saying, you don't have to wear a mask unless you're contagious. I'm like, but anytime I have dealt with MRSA, SARS, swine flu, any of that, everyone wears a mask to protect themselves because you don't want to breathe it. Like, oh yeah, that's different for this. And then you hear people are getting sick from airborne. So like, like, I don't know what's going on, so I'm just going to ultimate self-protection because that way I can relax. That's my choice. Other people are making other choices, and so long as they're impacting only themselves, that's fine. But I am owning my emotional reaction to this. It's my choice. Do I want to respond to this by feeling like a victim? or getting into arguments with people I otherwise love, or doing a backstretch like my cat. <laughs> I am choosing my response. When I start to feel fear or anxiety, I stop. And just like we discussed yesterday, so if you missed yesterday's video, go and watch that. I stop and I have a conversation with my emotions. I treat them as a being within their own right, a living soul. And I chat with them and allow them to resolve their issues and heal and then evacuate my body. Because I am choosing, we don't know what's going to go on, but at this moment, it is my right to feel love. Sorry, I had a banana spinach shake and I just belched. <laughs> um, banana spinach kombucha shake. It was really good. So it's my choice. Do I want to feel love and have a wonderful time with my family while we are safeguarding, while we are caring for our community the best way we can? I'd rather do that than feel anxiety. I certainly sleep a lot better that way. So, and I feel like I know our bodies, when filled with love, are always healthier than our bodies when filled with, you know, hate, anger, fear. I want a healthy body, so it's important if I'm going to take care of my family and those I love, I need to be filled with love. That way I can be my healthiest person with love caring for those I love. It's your right to feel love. So I'm going to leave you with that. If you have any questions, feel welcome to uh, reach out to me and ask me about this. Just remember, you are an eternal being. You planned to be here at this time. You planned your life and you planned, most importantly, the one thing that absolutely would 100% go as planned. You planned your body, you planned your temperament, you planned your intelligence, your natural skills, your inclinations. Honor what you planned for yourself and love what you planned for yourself. It is your right to love yourself. And then when the time comes that you're no longer in this life and you reconnect with your soul, you will be loved even more and valued. 
you may as well do it now. So I love you all. I value you. And I'm so grateful that you're living the lives that you're living because your lives have crossed with my life. And that just gives me blessings. And I send the blessings back to you. All right. Thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Give yourself big hugs. I like to pat, whoops, pat myself on the heart. Sometimes I just put my hands on my heart, send myself love. And I